Not a matter of if but when crisis could rock your world. I'm Rashini Rajkumar, licensed attorney, crisis strategist, and host of The Crisis Files. In each case file, we explore a real-world crisis or ripped-from-the-headlines controversy. My crisis squad and I are here to find solutions. I also invite insiders to weigh in. Today, that insider is Paul McGuire Grimes, film critic and entertainment reporter. He's our guy on all things Hollywood. News came down at the end of September that the five-month writer's strike ended with an agreement between the Writers Guild of America and major studios. As we speak, the actors are hitting their three-month mark behind the picket lines. Will goodwill pour over from the producers to the actor negotiations? No industry gets untouched. The video game industry could also see a strike. Paul is here to break it all down in the case file I call Hollywood End. Paul, as we speak, the agreement has gone through. WGA members voted yes. Give us the gist of what's being called an exceptional agreement. It basically means that both sides, the Writers Guild of America and the studios, have met. They've agreed on the new terms of this new contract. And which is amazing news. We were waiting really for all of the legality of that, all of the written language of what these contracts were going to be uh, to be determined before the writers could get back to work. That happened uh, recently, so which means that the writers are ready to get back to work. So we're going to see a return of our favorite late night shows, our daytime talk shows. Writers can get back into the writing rooms of our favorite sitcoms and streaming shows. It really, and then now we're seeing the effects of what it means to then actually have talk shows say we're going to be back to work late night with seth myers is going to be back to work on monday with new episodes and it's been since may 2nd that we haven't had these shows the writers have been on strike since may 2nd and seg after is still on strike so we can talk about that as well you and i spoke in case file number 53 writer's block we talked about just that at that point when that case file dropped they were more than two months on to the strike and you know we didn't see an end in sight but i don't know that we thought it would go on five months artificial intelligence was such an issue and as i understand it i mean i can't wait to get my eyes on the actual agreement with the wg between the two parties but I understand that both sides have gotten some concessions when it comes to artificial intelligence. That will be interesting to look at. Now, another layer, I want to get to the actors in a moment because it is good that these talk shows can go back on. So at least there's some fresh late night and daytime talk shows, but we still have the actors. Let's get into that in a moment. But just recently... SAG-AFTRA let us know, and by the way, I'm a SAG-AFTRA member as a broadcaster, so these strikes don't affect me, but... The video gamers have voted yes to go on strike. So, I mean, there are so many more industries that this all could encompass and does encompass. Yes. And we are seeing that recently, too, with with talk shows. Recently, Drew Barrymore got a lot of heat and Bill Maher got a lot of heat of returning to their talk shows that use Writers Guild writers, even though they were on strike. And now we're seeing it kind of dipping into the video game world. And it was uh, determined by 34,000 ballots that were cast, representing 27% of SAG-AFTRA who work in the video game industry to also go on strike to talk about what is in their contracts because the video game world is so huge and makes so much money and because actors are a part of that. They are using their images for characters. They are voicing these characters that people kind of forget that, you know, your favorite actors. Talk about The Last of Us on HBO, a massive television show that came from a beloved video game. Now, some of those actors in the video game are actors on the TV show as well. So it gets very murky when all these different contracts are happening with different parts of the industry. It's been fascinating. So we'll see how that affects video game consumption, video game creation going forward with sag as well. So many layers. And it is interesting because technology is really out there. It's real. It is not going away. And it absolutely touches the entertainment industry. So, Paul, you are definitely who we go to, all things Hollywood. Talk about what's your take as you're out there uh, and you have been out there. 
interviewing different kinds of people, do real people care about all this stuff happening in Hollywood? There, you know, there's the throwback time. There's the time of even when I was little. That's not hopefully a throwback time, but <laughs> when I was little and up into my 20s, you know, Hollywood had that mystique. There was glamour. These people were idolized. When all of this is happening and then AI gets involved, uh, has, has Hollywood lost some glossiness? I think people are realizing that Hollywood, even though, yes, we think of it in those glossy terms, that the people involved, everyone in Hollywood must live in these multi-million dollar mansions and have this cushy life, when that, like so many industries, is really the top one to five percent of people working, and that everyone else is your your average worker trying to make a living, trying to get health care, trying to put food on their table. And it's not easy to do that in the industry. So I think that the strike, hopefully, is telling people, the average viewer, that we're that everyone involved is still human, that we're still trying to fight for your right as a worker to get what you deserve and are paid for. And hopefully, it's giving people a better understanding of how the industry works and how many different facets and people are involved and that it's more than just content. You know, there's a lot of talk right now between art and content. What does that look like? And hopefully people aren't just seeing, taking it for granted. They're not just flipping on their Netflix queue, seeing something to watch and watching it and being done with it when there's real people, real jobs impacted. And it's, it's, it stretches. You talk about people on strike in, in LA, for instance, there's a lot of caterers, a lot of restaurants that get that get business because of things that are filming. It touches everything. And if you think about it, I think that's also now affecting the uh, car industry because they're talking about going on strike. So could that strike have happened if Hollywood also didn't go on strike? Is it unifying strength and numbers saying, hey, if they went on strike, just get what they want and deserve, then we can do the same thing as well. And I hopefully think that that is opening people's eyes about that to learning more. Yeah, you mentioned the UAW, the United Auto Workers, absolutely have ratified these strike actions. And the strike, I mean, they have said, though that leadership, UAW leadership has said, this isn't just about auto workers. This is about the disparity between the top-level C-suite executives of these corporations and the regular worker. And that's something, Paul, in Case Found 53, you and I talked about when it came to the big-name actors in front of the screen, top build, billing, and the camera operators, and every one in the crew to the craft food services people <laughs> behind the scenes that are there are certainly hundreds and thousands more of them than there are those mm-hmm. in front of the camera actors. Absolutely. So it, it, it is a movement. It's the labor u- movement that isn't just about Hollywood, mm-hmm. isn't just about the car industry. So it will be quite interesting to see what happens with UAW. Speaking about the actors, literally hot off the presses before I came to the <laughs> studio this morning as a SAG-AFTRA member, got an email from SAG-AFTRA. Dear member, at this time, we have no confirmed dates scheduled to meet with the AMPTP. When we have, when we do have dates confirmed, we will inform you. Unless you hear it from us, it's hearsay. Your TV theatrical streaming negotiating committee. So think about this. All these steps happen. We hear about the WGA. Everyone gets excited. Oh, you know, seg after, you're going to go back to the table uh, with the negotiators from the motion picture in a studio side, and they're saying, hey, hasn't happened yet. Well, that's that's a good reminder to go to the correct source. If you want to know what's actually happening with sag or the Writers Guild, go to their website, read their contracts, read their negotiations, and follow them on Instagram, follow them on Facebook, wherever you get your your direct news. Don't just go off of a headline that maybe Variety or Hollywood Reporter, as great as those resources are, that can be second nature. You know, like, go to the source. Don't just read a headline off Facebook and think, oh, that's the Bible truth. That is like standard, you know, 101 in terms of how do you read a headline and know sources. So go to them. And I think it's true. And I think it's something that's frustrating to know is that there are no negotiations on the table, no meetings scheduled for Sega after to, to meet with these studios. And that is really the next key step there. Do I think that that will happen soon? I would hope. I would hope that the Writers Guild strike ending is going to be the good kick of the pants that the studios need to get their actors back to work as well. Yeah, because here we are, October 2023, and the actor strike has been going on for more than two months, actually almost three months, and we have no real 
uh, movement there. We've had some fits no. and starts. So, but this thing, you know, so we're going to be able to see daytime and nighttime talk shows because those are not actors. Those are real people doing their talk show and their writers will be back to work. What about consumers, Paul? What can they, what can we expect Mm. this, uh, not only fall 2023, but into 2024 for our shows? Right. Our shows right now are pause. You know, if we love watching shows like Abbott Elementary, Grey's Anatomy, the Chicago lineup on NBC, you know, those are all written by broadcast writers on a very strict timeline, which they would have been back to work in July, knowing they would have written maybe 18 episodes, had that all plotted out as the season was going along. Well, right now, yeah, the writers are like, they can get back to work, but they don't know when the actors are coming back. So they don't know yet how they can write for actors if they don't know when they're going to be filming. So that's a catch. Are they going to write maybe six episodes, thinking we might be able to get back to filming in January and film a few episodes? Or are they going to say, this whole season is squash and we're just going to write fresh for the fall? We don't know. I think movies are going to be at an advantage because then movies can be written and then film when the actors come back. I think that streaming shows that may not be on a specific schedule, whether it's Stranger Things, Wednesday, they can plot out a season and just know that they will film when actors are back and it can be released whenever the timeline fits. I think that will be, I think they're better off than our favorite broadcast shows. Yeah, and the other thing is it's interesting to note that uh, these different networks are going to the vault, whether it's their vault or another network's vault, because someone was just saying to me how they were asking me if I've ever watched Suits, and (laughs) I watched Suits not when it was live on USA Network, but uh, in 2020, and it was old by then, but I watched all the seasons, loved it, consumed it, binge-watched it, and now it's on Netflix, so more people are getting to know the seven or eight seasons of Suits, which, by the way, Meghan Merkel was in. It, it's one of my all-time favorite legal shows. And it's back on Netflix, and to many people, it's new. So that's kind of an right. interesting phenomenon. I mean, the the, the, the the guy that's in me that likes um, accuracy, people think that Suits is a new show or that it's a Netflix show. No, it's not. It's an old show. And yeah, it doesn't matter when you're watching it. It's great that people are watching it, right? And I do think that these broadcasts, like the ABC, the NBCs, are trying to fill their, their slots, their time slots. We are seeing that CBS is airing Yellowstone. So people that didn't catch it when it was live or if they don't have Paramount Plus or Peacock or wherever the rights are for you, each and in individual season they can go back and watch it and i think that they're also airing like a an ncis from australia like they're really pulling in content from the streaming services that were exclusive just to have something to air or they're they're utilizing game shows or r- new reality shows because that's what they can do right now and i question some of that like great that there's content but we all know what happened the last time people went on strike and the reality shows that we got and i don't want a repeat of that No, I would say the one genre that has really been disappointing is the reality genre. That has not improved in quality. Well, Paul McGuire Grimes, always great to get your insight. You can get more of Paul at at his website. I want to make sure you have the right link, paulstriptothemovies.com. Catch up on all case files at thecrisisfiles.com for the show archive plus special videos. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube at The Crisis Files. This case file is sponsored by the Mall of America. An international destination for more than 30 years, the Mall of America continues to draw millions of guests from around the world. But the mall is so much more than shopping. Events, activations, and attractions continue to delight guests of all ages. They're also a strong supporter of the community and nonprofit organizations. Go to mallofamerica.com to find out more. I'm Rashini Rajkumar. Join me next time on The Crisis Files. 